here on the Pathfinder 2500 Hybrid, and this is a boat we brought out in model year 2017. And as soon as we brought it out, it was a huge hit. It's one of the best selling Pathfinders of all time. And if you're willing to spend a few minutes with me this morning, I'm gonna go through the whole boat and show you why it's just been such a, a giant success in the marketplace and all the great benefits it brings. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the compartments, I wanna talk about the overall layout of the boat a little bit. And this is really something that sort of sets it apart. The boat is 24 feet, nine inches. It has an 8.6 beam as I walk around this boat. Notice how wide it seems, even though that beam is only 8.6. So it's very manageable beam. It isn't something you need a, an oversized um, permit to, to trailer, but at the same time, tons of space on this boat. The way we've laid it out, we really maximize that beam. It's a double-stepped haul boat, so it's very fast, very fuel efficient, but yet it only drafts about 13 and a half inches. It's also vacuum infused using our Averis technology. That is vacuum assisted resin infusion system. And we've done that on this boat from day one. It creates a really, really tight laminate. It's the strongest strength to weight ratio in the entire business. The boat is very fast, upwards about 60 miles per hour, depending on how you have it propped and your load and all that kind of stuff. And then it also floats in only about 13 and a half, 13 and a half inches. So you combine all those things and it really creates a very high performance boat that has tons of room, tons of storage capability, and is just a fishing machine. So we're gonna start with the bow of the boat, and you really can't talk about a forward deck unless you talk about how you get up to that forward deck. And, and too often in bay boats and their design, that's an afterthought. They have a really big pinch point here a trans, as it transitions from the forward deck on to, into the cockpit. That creates all kinds of trip hazards, creates an area where everybody has to go through the same uh, passageway to get to the forward deck makes things really, really crowded. As you can see on this boat here, we have this big step that goes gunnel to gunnel. So it's super wide. So it opens up this whole thing. There's no pinch point at all. So to, no matter how you're coming up to the deck, you can come around either side of the console. You don't have to meet in the middle here. And so you can have people coming both ways. It really opens this up. Also notice as I step up to the front deck, how easy these steps are. It's not a big, huge step where it's easy for me to trip or something like that. That's especially important if, let's say I have a big fish on that's running to the back and I need to be able to quickly transition from the bow to the stern of the boat. It's very important if I have a, a net full of bait that I'm gonna carry back to the back end of the bait. It's really easy to navigate here. I'm not worried about taking any missteps, falling, hurting myself or anything like that. So you can see that as I step up here, all right? This deck is absolutely massive. As I said, this boat is eight, six feet, eight feet, six inches in its beam. And it carries that beam really far forward on the deck, on the top sides here. So you have just a huge space for multiple anglers. It's nice and high, so I'm very elevated, so I can see really well. All right, um, that's the sort of what, why we call this boat a, a hybrid, because we have this big forward deck here that's almost more like a, a flat skiff than a t traditional bay boat. And then we have the back end that I'll talk about here in a little bit that's more open up, more like almost like a center console. So anyways, we have this big, huge front deck. It allows a number of things. First off, like I said, multiple angles, anglers can cast up here without an issue, without getting in each other's way. You have tons of storage below. I'll get into that in a second. Starting with the trolling motor, uh, every Pathfinder comes with trolling motor wire standard on the boat. There are metal plates up forward here so you can tap, drill and tap the trolling motor, put it on aftermarket if you like. We do it at the factory with the, with the motor guide, 36 volt, 60 inch shaft. That 60 inch shaft is perfect for the boat. Um, even in big chop and stuff like that, you're not going to blow out. So 60 inch shaft works very, very well. 36 volt, that'll get you over to the 100 pounds of thrust that you need. But that's come standard on the boat, all that wiring, all you have to do is drill and tap and, and drop that trolling motor on. Obviously a flush forward cleat. You notice everything up here is completely flush. If I wanted to fly fish up here, I could do it very easily without worrying about any obstructions at all. But going into our anchor locker right here, big opening for the anchor locker right here. That's really important. Anchors are a necessary evil. It's nice to have them uh, in just regular conditions, but you know, it's a, it's a safety need, okay? And you guess now we have GPS trolling motors and we have power poles and they do great. 
um, in a lot of applications, but there's certainly some applications, and especially if you were to lose power or anything like that, you absolutely need an anchor. And you need, if you're gonna have an anchor, you need an anchor that's big enough to hold the boat, and you also need one that's big enough to uh, anchor locker to hold the, all the road and chain you're gonna need. So you need a big space here, and after, oftentimes that's an afterthought. You can see here, big space, lid, opens out of the way these nice friction hatches it stays up out of the way in here is where your trolling motor plug is so it stays nice and uh, uh, out of the elements you have a light nice little notch here where that trolling motor wire goes through there so you're not pinching that trolling motor wire but that's the proper anchor cut locker setup that you need to have on a bay boat so as i walk back to talk about all the various storage on the boat take note once again just how big that space is there Looking at this forward storage compartment, this thing is actually absolutely huge. It goes right from here all the way forward. It's multi-leveled. Right now in here we have, I think, six PFDs. We have two tackle bags and two five-gallon buckets. One five-gallon bucket just to have as a spare. It's always great to have a five-gallon bucket on board a boat. We have plenty of places to put five-gallon buckets on this boat and then a, a cast net in here. We actually have three cast nets loaded in this boat at one time, and that's the beauty of this boat. You can absolutely clear out your whole tackle room. And so that's what this boat gives you. It gives you the versatility to go do a ton of things in one day. And to do all those different things, you have to have the tackle to do it from offshore gear to inshore gear, to fly rods, to cast nets, all that. And you can put all that on this boat all at one time. And it all goes away very cleanly. As you notice, we walk around this boat, we have it loaded up with gear. It's not in the way or anything like that. It's all hidden away in very tight, great compartments that are very watertight with gasket, gaskets on them with the gym latches. The bigger lids will have the gas shocks on them to help you lift them and, and so that they, and they also stay up and out of the way when you wanna be in that compartment. So really great storage and tons of it on the 2500 hybrid. Close that and see how that latches down really nice and flush that keeps that water out of there also makes it so that it's very easy to walk around the boat and you have no obstructions we have rod lockers that are lockable on either side the center latch is lockable as well so these will take up to seven and a half foot rods forward here you can see i have a sabiki rod in here right now that's something i just keep on the boat all, at all times you never know when you're going to come across a bunch of good bait that you can sabiki you know, typically sabiki rods, this particular one is designed so that it keeps the, the hooks integrated inside the rod so they stay out of the way. But a lot of times if you have to do it on a spinning rod, you know, you have all those hooks, all that kind of stuff. It's really nice to be able to segregate tackle out, segregate all kinds of stuff just so you do not, some things don't play well together and it's really nice to get sabiki rods in and out of the way. It's a perfect place for them right here. You can put other rods in here as well. Like I said, it's lockable so you can, you know, take the boat in. If you, if you want to leave rods in here overnight or something like that, you can do that very easily this is a really cool design and that when you don't have the rod in there you can take that rod holder and flip it flat so it creates a whole open storage space in there so you don't have the rod holders obstructing your ability to put more gear in there and as you can see as we walk around I'll show you all the gear we have in the boat we don't even have this thing full and you could put a ton more gear in here as well we have one over on this side matching same same deal same setup with the rod tubes forward so you protect the tips um, takes the rods the same way also have more storage space there so one thing we've offered new for model year 2022 is these forward rod holders and it may not seem like much we that was something that we didn't do except for in a, a custom feature before but now they're now they're an option that you can order right off the, the uh, website or the order form and these make a ton of sense because anytime you're up here on the bow and you need to go back and get something in the back end of the boat, you would have to just leave your rod on the deck or carry it with you. And obviously, the non gets very good about being grippy, but it's not so great on, on rods and reels. So it's great to just have this rod holder here that you can put the rod in as you transition back and forth. So this is something new that's for 2022. There are a couple other things I'll talk about that we've done, that we've, modifications we made since the boat first got brought out that have really enhanced the boat. 
So I talked about how great this trend, this set step is here as a transition to the forward deck, but you can really see how well we utilize it as well for storage. And here we have a big storage compartment right here. This is actually insulated, so you could use this as a cooler if you want, but we have tons of cooler space on the boat that are insulated space. So a lot of times, this is just another storage compartment. In, as you see in here, we have dock lines. You can use it forever what, for whatever you want, but it stays really nice and dry. It is insulated to use as a cooler. All right, and then this is something really unique that I, I don't know of any other bay boat other 25 feet has something like this. This is a, a 47 gallon fish box and it's fully insulated and it's completely dry as, as you can see in here. We're, we're not going offshore fishing or anything like that today so we don't have anything set up to uh, to bring fish in here but you could fill this thing at full up with ice it would take a smoker king take a big mahi something like that but it also serves as a, a great additional storage box once again more storage you cannot fill this thing up um, in addition new for 2022 uh, like i said one of the another enhancement we've made is that this drains overboard directly it's with the seacock okay you can ask, access the seacock through that forward storage compartment there so you shut that off um, you keep the water outside, you open it up and lets that water drain out. You can also macerate it as an option as well. So one of the options we offer on the boat also is a, a JL stereo system. And it has this, the sports speakers in it. As you see here, we have two forward, two aft. If you're able, if you're getting a hard top on the boat, you'll have two up top on there as well. So total of, total of six speakers really great sound uh, you can hear them anywhere in the boat another thing we offer is fresh water wash down in this boat salt water comes standard but you can get fresh water as well which is nice to have the, the spigots on the back of the boat i'll show you that in a minute but that would be a six gallon tank on the, on the fresh water wash and once again i talked a little bit about the rod holders forward which is a, a great feature that is something that's often not thought about very much but these work really well so i talked about the insulated space we have up here but also we have cooler set up here which works really really well now standard on the boat would be your angle 50 quart cooler which obviously angles are very nice coolers and they come with the, the cushion package on top and the nice cushion up here but we offer as an option the fiberglass cooler and what you can do with that is you can color match it to the boat which is really nice also it holds ice every bit as well as that angle it's nice and big so you have tons of capacity in here you have a bunch of full case of waters in here ice drinks all that kind of stuff easily fit lunch in here too. Like I said, you could utilize also another one of the, this little cooler over here, this insulated box for more drinks, that sort of thing. Big heavy lid, keeps it really well insulated. It also is super comfortable. A great seat right here. It's perfectly situated where I have enough room to walk in front of it, but at the same time, it works great. So I have a little place to put my feet here, sort of a, a, a nice foot rest and lock yourself in. If you're up here, you have the nice contoured cushion. So it really, um, for it basically wraps around you and is very very comfortable super cushiony great place to set on this particular boat the customer opted for the Bentley uh, black stitching which is an upgrade you can also do the, the cushions in a two-tone gray which is popular also in a, a two-tone tan as well and then standard would just be a white setup but very nice elegant cushions uh, double stitch upholstery very sharp looking, as you can see, you have the Pathfinder logo in here. They're also antimicrobial, so not, you're not gonna get any of that pinking on you. So they're comfortable, they're durable, and they're super stylish. They look really good. So as everybody knows, at, at Pathfinder, we are very big fishermen. We'd spend a ton of time on the water. And in doing that, we design the boats around things that we think are really important. And not only is that layout in terms of ease of use, ease of fishability, also being able to make it comfortable so you can have the family, but maintenance is really, really important to us. And you can see that in how we design this console. This console is, has always been standard on this boat from year one. We've, uh, it's been such a big hit that we've adapted it over to all the Pathfinders from 22 through 26, so the 26 HBS. But these are the great things about this console. You have this huge open door here, all right? So it opens up and it gives you tons of space to the back side of your helm, the back side of your electronics, your battery charger. The console is big enough where it swallows all that stuff up very easily, um, but doesn't take up too much space. As you can see, when, we walk, when I walk around it, you'll see I have tons of room around the outside of the console. But something we did that was really neat on the 25 Pathfinder is we also have this 
area down below the console area where it's actually recessed before the below the floor where you can put all your batteries and you can fit up to five batteries in here so not only do you have your three for your trolling motor but you can have a, a crank battery and then an additional backup crank which some people like to have but it fits all here down out of the way it's in its own compartment it's separated by a nice vented little area with an acrylic panel on it so you can maintain visual contact on your batteries making sure that there's no corrosion or anything on there um, but at the same time you can use this whole console for yet again even more storage and if you want to go and access everything and basically be able to walk in this console which you could and that, that would be the way you would want to get those batteries out of there is if you needed you can actually open this door down below as well so it's a basically a double dutch door that allows the whole front of the console to open up and it's just a really great um, maintenance piece i mean i can sit on this cooler right here and work on all this back end of this switch panel and all that kind of stuff very easily we build all our wiring harnesses in-house at pathfinder each one is not only made to the model it's made to your very order um, the day before the boat needs it so it's very best wiring harnesses in the business here very easy to access through this console opening so as i transition to the back end of the boat i want you to take note of this section right here in most boats this is a pinch point okay between the gunnel and the sidewall and especially in a lot of bay boats especially in a lot of bay boats that the console is just too big and also they don't utilize the space on the gunnel um, so what we've done here the console is the perfect size it has all the functionality you need but doesn't take up too much space we've raised it off the floor with a nice toe kick there so that frees up the space even more you can see how much room i have between the console and the gunnel wall even with rods and the rod holders here i'm not going to be dump, bumping into the rods i'm not going to be walking by them and getting hooked on my shirt or anything like that we took and freed this space up here by basically using this gunnel board that goes on after the fact that allows us to have this nice under gunnel, gunnel storage also free that up like i said this is only eight foot six inches wide in the beam but uh, it's about utilizing the space properly so with these with these gunnel boards i have that under gunnel storage here i can put rods in there like fly rods i can also put big offshore gear um, just more and more ro rod space i also can put gas long handled um, brushes that kind of stuff but it really allows for a lot of room here and especially on a boat that's only six foot eight feet six inches wide so we get a ton of compliments on our hard top and i think if you'd really take a close inspection of it you'll you'll see why first off big really nice nicely welded frames very robust sturdy you can powder coat them um, just like this person has powder coated theirs gray you can also do it in white you can do it in a, in a, a matte black as well you see how they come up and, and tie into this really nice this is a, a two-part hard top here seamless Okay, this particular person decided to, to do the underside and the matching gel coat. You can do it in any color you want. We offer custom colors as an up, upgrade, but you can also do it in our standard palette of color, five colors here. The tar top also is really well designed and a bunch of very specific features. Um, one thing is the slits for the rods to go through, okay? Obviously, if you're going to have a rod that I think is probably, it's about six inch, I mean, six foot span here. If you're going to have a rod longer than six feet, it's going to need to clear that hard top. Here we've achieved that by having this nice molded in opening here. We have it nice and padded with the C deck so you're not gonna tear up your guides when you put the rods through here. Also it's channeled so that the water actually on top of the hard top, if it rains, it goes around those slits and doesn't fall in. If it were to fall in while you're running, it would get, it'd get you wet. So the water is channeled so it goes around those slits um, if you do have water on the hard top. As well, you have double storage which is really neat so you have the ford storage box here some people will put their vhf electronics in there we made that as a standard option for 2022 but you can also put a number of other things in there as well and then we have this back storage compartment here once again more storage we have that vented so that if you do want to put the the pfds let's say the sup suspenders inflatable suspenders or something like that you can fit them back there they're not going to get melded or something like that just really really nice to have um, storage space fore and aft. Once again, you can never have much more, enough storage space. Also, we have LED down lighting up here. We have the blue lighting so that it, it gives you a nice, good mood effect, but still, um, and not too glary, but you can still see well. We have spreader lights fore and aft. We have molded in speaker pods as well. If you were to get that uh, optional JL speaker on your hardtop and speakers in your hardtop, you'd have these two speakers here. 
but really, really nice setup um, that has, has a lot of thought in it, a lot of detail, looks really nice and very functional as well. So moving behind the helm here, there's a whole bunch to talk about. First off, I remember I talked about how it's just the right size. It can fit everything that you need on it, but it's not too wide where it takes up too much space. So starting right at the very top, boat comes standard with the Ritchie compass. Everybody says, you know, if you have a GPS, why do you need a compass? It's really nice to have a compass a lot of times to keep a heading, especially if, you, if your GPS goes down, but compass can always be useful. Up top here, you also have this little keeper up here. This allows you to put your cell phone, whatever you want up here. It's not gonna fall down. You have this big area up here, okay? So you can put up to a 16 inch unit in, in this space. This is a, a 12 inch Garmin right here, but we offer all, all, all the way up to the 8616. Also, here's where your JL stereo system would go, your head unit. If you wanted a VHF, you could even fit a VHF here as well. Or like I said, we're now offering the option for the VHF up top in that, in that uh, hard top forward storage compartment. So then you have your switch panel down here. As you can see, it's, it's well labeled. Um, each switch has its own, or each accessory has its own switch, excuse me. You know exactly which switch goes for which accessory. When you have the nav lights on, those are all lit up so you can see in the dark which switch you have on, that kind of thing. Going down to the Yamaha gauge, okay, that fits perfectly right in there. That's with the whole fuel management system, all that kind of stuff. That's but most often than not gets it gets the 300 takes max up to a, a 350 but this is where that the gauge would no, normally go on this particular boat they opted for the whole basically money of the HEMX Hellmaster system with the joystick with the autopilot um, digital electronic steering as you can see the console is able to absorb all that very well Lo still looks great uh, this is a really, really cool setup. A lot of people say, well, why in the world would you need, need that with a, a single engine? I don't think you need it as much necessarily for docking, but a lot of the capability that comes with it, like the fish point, the stay point, um, the set point, all that stuff is really, really cool. So I would, I would encourage you to look online, look at some of the Yamaha videos and see exactly what this functionality can do. And you'll see it has a whole lot of applications for a lot of, especially near shore fishing, bump trolling, that kind of stuff. Very cool setup. Nonetheless, the uh, console absorbed it, absorbed it very well. Perfect spot for it right there. You have the two integrated cup holders. That's always a big deal. You never have enough cup holders place for your power pole. I would say 90% of the, the pathfinders leave the factory with either a single power pole or dual power pole. So that's a very important component in any, any bay boat. You have your trim tabs in this particular boat. They have the, the indicators on them, which is a nice feature. It tells you where your tab is at all times. That's an option on the boat. Down to you, here, you have autopilot set up that ties in with it with that joystick which also has some very cool functionality the new yamaha binnacle that matches up to that 300 with the hemx and some really neat speed control features on that as well push button push button start there it is over here at the helm which as you can see is pushed off to the to the port side that's nice because when you're in your seat you're not taking up the whole seat if the helm were in the middle you're taking up the whole seat and you're leaving either side to basically um, not much room for somebody to sit down over there but it, since it's pulled all the way to the port you have full open access to the starboard side of the seat here you see it, it has the tilt that comes standard with the um, with the 300 and that HEMX and digital steering. You also have a standard jack plate on this boat, okay? So you have that blinker switch right there. That's really nice. You can be on the wheel, you can be on the throttle, you can be doing the tilt and trim, you can be doing the jack plate at the same time and controlling the boat. So all your, all your hands are right where they need to be when you're controlling the boat and, and uh, maximizing the performance. Also, we offer um, Edson steering wheels. That's a very common um, chosen option for us. We have them in the, in the black. We also have them in the stainless steel. The standard wheel is a nice gem wheel that has a suicide knob as well. Um, but a lot of people also opt to go the upgrade to the ops, to the Etson, which just has a great feel in your hands and is a really nice steering wheel. 
All right, another thing about this is, is that this is an actually an insert here. So it's separate piece from the main part of the console. And we did that for a few reasons, but one of the primary reasons we did that is so that it could be color matched. So you can, just like this boat did, um, color match this to the rest of your gel coat on your boat. A lot of people leave it white. A lot of people like to do like a, a color like a gray or something like that. That's really nice because you don't get that bounce back from the glare. But just an, an added feature, and an added way to customize your boat and really personalize it. So you can never have too many little storage cubbies around the console. Reason being is because you always have things in your pockets that you want to get out of your pockets but you want to have close by like keys, wallets, um, cell phones obviously. Another good thing Thing you can keep in them is is like the trolling motor remote or the power pole remote and we achieve all that with this really nice glove box here it is lockable so you can leave stuff in there but you have this big wide opening it's nice and padded in there you have the keeper so none of your stuff if you leave it open it's gonna fall out you have two 12 volt plugs in here so if you want to blow up any kind of towables or anything like that or use a, a spotlight that works great you also have a USB port in here, so you can go ahead and charge your phone uh, and, or plug in, go through the stereo system with Bluetooth, what have you. And then this is also where we keep our, our breakers, and they're nice and accessible. Everything's well labeled. You can control every breaker for accessory on the boat pretty much right here. Also, have we have our independent battery switches. So you have a, a battery switch for just your house battery and also your trolling motor system. That way you can just keep them independent. You don't, you, that way you don't have any stray currents or if you don't plan on using the trolling motor for the day, you don't have to flip on that battery switch and, and just uh, drain any kind of um, juice from the batteries that way. But really nice setup, very accessible. Um, like I said, you always have to have some place to put all this stuff close by the console and this does it perfectly. So it's really important how comfortable you are around this area. Obviously, you're going to be spending a bunch of time here. And uh, this whole setup does a really, really good job of, of allowing people to sit in different positions depending on their comfort level, their size, everything. So first off, we achieved that by, like I said before, we raised up this console. It gives more room around it, but it also allows you a really nice toe kick, which basically means that you can get your feet up underneath it and sort of lock yourself in and, and lean back like I'm doing now. I have the bolster up on these really nice independent bolster chairs and stuff. So I have it up. I'm almost using it like a leaning post in this position. I'm locked in and the toe kick here. I have perfect reach here to the steering wheel, the throttle. I don't have any awkward reachers or anything like that. Super comfortable to sit back and drive. I'm still nice and I have my, you know, I'm still nice and elevated so I can see well, um, but I still get the coverage of the windshield. So all this goes into the design of these boats. We're very, very particular about ergonomics and just how it feels to be doing anything in a boat. And this is a perfect example of that. Just really nice setup, everything right at hand's reach. Really comfortable. If I want to go ahead and sit all the way up and back, I can do this. I can drop down that bolster. I can sit all the way back. Once again, I have easy reach to the steering wheel. If I wanted to tilt this wheel down and get that reach or tilt it up and have the reach like this as well. So this is really nice. I have the armrest that I can pull down. Obviously these are independent as you can see. So this person could be in the leaning post position like I was before or kicked back. Um, works really well. Also what's really nice about this is these independent footrests. Oftentimes boats are going to have one single footrest for both both parties. Well not everybody's going to want the footrest. In this particular position if I were to get up and want to sit like this, the footrest would be hitting me in the back of the legs. So it's really nice for this person next to me. If they want that footrest, they can do that and drop the bolster. They're nice and comfortable. They have their perfect position. I have my perfect position to run the boat. So with the way this is able to be moved around, adjusted, it really works well for all parties. It makes everybody super comfortable. So we talk about this boat in terms of inshore in the front, that big flat deck, and then offshore in the back. And offshore in the back, that means a number of different things. First off, it starts right back here with this rod storage and, and um, having all this rod storage capability. So there are 24 dedicated rod storage places on this boat between rod racks here if you do the optional hard top rod racks up here unogunnel rod racks like i talked about for the fly rods or whatever you want to put under there and then also rod holders for the lockable rod holders so 24 rod holders a lot of people say well you know why do you need that many rod holders well first off not many people are going to have 24 
rods. We understand that. But at the same time, if you're gonna have a boat that does a lot of different things, like I said before, you're gonna need places to put a bunch of different kind of tackle. But also what's really nice about having all these different rod racks is, for instance, you can have them here. This is a great place to keep the rods where you're gonna rig them or maybe you're baiting them or something like that. But then also, once you want to get them out of the way, you can just put them up to the top rod storage rack right here and now you free up all this space back here so any rods that you don't want to use you go ahead and you move them up there you utilize this space here for the rods that you're going to use it opens up even more room back here you still have all the tackle you need and that sort of thing so that's why we put so many rod holders on the boat also for instance it's really nice a lot of places a lot of boats don't have a place for a bait net when you have the bait well in the back of the boat it just ends up getting laid against the uh, on the back deck here you take your bait net you put it right here it's right here where you your live well is it's very accessible has a great place to go it's out of the way so one thing that we really wanted to make sure we did here and one of the things we thought of sort of a solution we could bring into the market was a bay boat with a lot of space behind the, the leaning post and there are not many of them out there and and the reason we thought that was really important is because as i said before we're anglers we have we utilize a pro staff they're actually obviously very good anglers we observe what other people are doing in terms of how they're fishing. And we notice that a lot of people fish out the back of a bay boat, especially in inlet kind of conditions when they're using the boat in near shore conditions, fishing over patch reefs, what have you, maybe bump trolling offshore. And when you have a great big deck in the back end there, you don't have much space behind your, your uh, leaning post area. And when you're in those big water conditions, it's really, there's no point in being on an elevated back deck. Not only a lot of people feel unsafe up there, but you really don't need that added advantage of being high so a lot of people like to feel nice and secure in the cockpit so we wanted to make the cockpit bigger um, more usable and a lot of that has to do with right behind the helm seat area so that's what we did here is how we open this up a lot you can see the amount of space we have here even when I had the rod holders uh, the rods and the rod holders I had a ton of space now like I said I moved them up to the, the leaning top uh, the, the hard top up there and made even more space but tons of room back here this is a more space than uh, even in, in some center consoles and certainly more space than you're gonna find in a bay boat open this up a ton you can fish back here very easily you can fish out the back of the boat you're not worried about hitting things over top of you you're still nice and secured down in the boat instead of up, up on top of the boat well another thing a lot of people don't think about in making this situation or uh, this design this way it gives you easy access to the rod holders from the cockpit okay so I can go ahead and reach the rod holders without having to get on the back deck I can go ahead and get to my cleat without having to get on the back deck so I don't have to stand up everything is accessible but meanwhile I'm nice down inside the boat I feel really nice and secure if I have a big fish that goes behind the back of the boat I still have enough reach and with my arms here to get around the back of the boat without having to jump on that back deck Obviously, if you're going to have to all these rods on board, you're going to have to have tackle to put on them. And so we have this great storage, uh, tackle storage system back here on the back seat of the cell. See, this is standard on this boat. You can also opt for just a regular leaning post uh, where you'd have an 80 quart cooler under the leaning post, angle cooler. That's sta standard if you go for that option. You can also do um, a live well leaning post here as well. But this is the standard setup on the boat. I really like this because, as I said, if you're going to have all these rods on board, certainly need tackle for them so we have this storage box here that fits your plano trays just perfectly these are all lockable so you can actually put your trays in there keep them in here at all times and make sure they're nice and secure and then these second trays that slide out that are really great for just terminal gear leader pliers all that kind of stuff it's super nice to have all your gear right here at the back of the boat especially when you're fishing out the back so that if you do break off or anything like that you can just hop in here you have your pliers handy cut it cut off your or tie on a new hook whatever you need to do cut switch baits you can just throw everything right back in here it's out of the way but super accessible so not only does notching this out give you a ton of room back here, but it also offers a great access to your bilge. And on bay boats, that's oftentimes, oftentimes sort of an afterthought. It's very difficult to reach the pumps and everything else and do any kind of maintenance. But here you have this huge hatch. All right, it pulls right open. We have a, another cast net in here. As I said, we had three cast nets on board, and this boat swallows them all. We'll move that out of the way. But you can see 
I have great access in here to both my my live well pumps okay also have access even further back and it can be accessed through the motor well area to my, to my bilge pump and and float switch in here but huge storage compartment easy access um, can put the storage or the cast nets in here as well it has this big oversized drain and drains overboard so it maintains the boat as being uh, self bailing but just great access to the bilge and, and very accessible so I mentioned that the boat is self bailing and, and that's achieved through these cockpit drains. We have one in the store, starboard and aft, uh, our starboard and port corners of the cockpit, way here in the back. And those are nice and high and they're elevated. They have a good downward flow, so you're not going to get much in the way of backflow through them or any water back up in the cockpit. As you can see down here, you have the, the nozzle for the wall water on this boat. That is standard on the boat. Raw water is really nice to have. Uh, comes in handy especially when you're throwing the cast net or something like that and you just want to rinse down the boat or if you bring a fish on board and it's it's bloody it's really nice to just use that raw water and go ahead and wash the boat down keep everything nice and clean the back deck we did shorten it up a bunch and I talked about why that was but at the same time we get, it kept a lot of functionality in it and one thing that's super important about having a back deck is obviously you need seats so we have these seats back here they work really well they lock in place they lock in place like that that way so that when you're trailering they don't pop up on their own but you can see the, the backrest folds up here super comfortable it's really nice and and low in here so you feel secure you're down inside the boat a little bit you have plenty of handholds you have a nice drink holder here okay so that's right perfectly situated so you can have your drink but just a, a great place in the boat you can stretch out your legs it does exactly what it's intended to do all right also has yet again more storage underneath in this particular case you also have the storage but you also have access to your fuel filter and you have access to your power pole pump down here and as, as well you can also put a five gallon bucket in here um, for another cast net so and actually on, on the, the uh, port side there we have a cast net in that bucket as well all right it also provides access to these drains those seacocks so you can shut that water out if for whatever there's a breach up upstream of that any through hole in the boat as mandated by the abyc that's american boat and yacht council we build to those standards it's the highest standards in the in the, in the industry that any through hole that's going out the bottom of the boat or below the water line requires a seacock and that's a safety mechanism so you can go ahead and cut that seacock off and it will not allow any water inside the boat whatsoever so obviously a boat's about trade-offs. Anytime you decide to, to focus on one particular thing, oftentimes it comes at the cost of another thing. And so it was really important to us that we had the live well that was a big enough, yet we still maintain this back, back opening here. And we achieved that through this well right here, which is 35 gallons, okay? Has a nice big opening on it, has those friction hatches, uh, hinges, lid, lid stays up out of the way. As you can see, it's really important with the live well design. When that lid is open, you don't have any obstructions in here, okay? You don't have anything that's going to catch your net or anything like that or obstruct you from chasing that, those bait fish around inside the well with the bait net. We have the, the leaning, I mean the um, standpipe pushed way out of here the in the corner. That's because it's to keep it out of the way. We have it set up with this plexi grid in here so bait fish does not get do not get behind it we have the plexi grid set up with the holes in it in such a way so that the the well drains from the top to bottom uh, that's really important because if you don't drain at the bottom of the well it's going to toxify the well what happens is as that bait gets in there and it it releases a lot of ammonia and, and urine it defecates all that kind of stuff all that sinks to the bottom of the well it toxifies the well and it overcomes the well from the bottom to the top so it's really important that you have a mechanism in the, in the live well to be able to drain from the bottom to the top that's achieved with that great system and how we do that we this boat has a, the recirculating pump in it as well that's a good feature in case you're in a red tide area where you don't want to have that water circulate into the well from the outside you can just use the recirc well recirc that water it's the closed system stays right inside the well and just recircs through that system also you have a big pick up from outside obviously that brings in your your fresh water into the well as well but really great setup 
It's 35 gallons, like I said. Some people say, well, I want more live well space than that. And you can do that. You can do that by getting that, uh, I believe it's a 27 gallon uh, leaning post live well. So at that point, what is that? Almost uh, 62 gallons, I guess. Um, so that's more than enough live well space if you're a guy who really likes to chum or do that kind of stuff. You also have an option as well to do a leaning, I mean, a live well back here, what we would call basically like a crustacean well or a um, crab well. And so that well, I believe, is about 18 gallons. Um, it's not a great big well, but perfect for crabs or shrimp. It's really nice to be able to segregate those out so you don't have them in with your pinfish because your pinfish will eat your shrimp or your crabs or that sort of stuff. I also like these boxes as well. When you Obviously, when you don't have them as a live well or utilizing them as a live well, you can use them as a storage bo box. I like them because you can also segregate other things. I mean, you have them on both sides of the boat, port and starboard here, so you can use them to put trash in if you want to or wet towels or wet t-shirts or that kind of stuff so you're not mixing that in with your uh, dry goods and it's really nice to be able to sort of segregate that stuff out um, keep it all apart and uh, it works great with these two wells but if you want to use it as a crustacean well or option as a crustacean well you can do that as well so like I said, we, we shorten up this back deck for good reason to open up this cockpit, but it's still here. And if you want to fish off of it, you certainly can. You're up high, nice and elevated. You're in the inshore condition or, or what have you. Or you want to see out the back if you're chumming or something like that. So we still have the back deck. Obviously everything is flushed away. Those seats are nice flushed away. So there's no obstructions back here. But it takes, it takes us back to the, the engine and, and the boat takes up to a 350 horsepower. But we, uh, we put 300s on it more often than not. Obviously, this is the Yamaha 300 with the new integrated digital steering, which is super clean, as you can see. Really nice setup. This boat, depending on how you have it propped, load, all that kind of stuff, um, pinning a hard top, second station, all that. You know, you can get upwards of 60 miles per hour, so very quick, very fuel efficient package like this with that twin stepped hole combined with this engine. Works really, really well. As I mentioned before, power poles, um, we put them on just almost about every Pathfinder we build. Great setup on this boat. You have a standard jack plate, so the power poles get mounted on brackets. You can do um, port or starboard power pole. You can do both power poles, uh, factory installed. And then uh, the boat also comes standard with a uh, swim ladder back here, which is really nice. It's not your starboard swim ladder you see on a lot of boats. It's actually a, a fiberglass swim ladder. It's matched up to the gel coat that your boat has. Has a nice little rub rail around it. Very nice feature. Works great. It's long enough so it's easy to get aboard. Walk right up on it, folds up, gets out of the way, and you walk right up where if you if you were to have your freshwater wash down here pulled out, you come right up, take a shower, and just hop on board. So really nice setup but has all the functionality of a typical back deck it's just a lot smaller gives you a lot more cockpit room so while we're talking about the, the engine another thing we've done an enhancement we went and made for model year 22 is we actually upgraded the fuel and we upgraded it to 78 gallons before it was 67 gallons and a lot of people thought that was a little um, maybe not as much as was needed so we went ahead we redid the stringer grid system in the, in the boat to allow for a larger fuel tank to 78 gallons which has made a, a lot of people very happy and like i said that's a model year 2022 upgrade so I hope I've done a well enough job showing you exactly why this boat is is so popular and, and why it has the name hybrid and, and that's because like I talked about that inshore in the front offshore in the back which is a really unique design for a boat under 25 feet. Uh, the boat is a great performer, floats shallow, but runs big, runs great in open water conditions, very quick, tons of storage space for not only just gear or, or family gear, but also tackle, rods, all that kind of stuff. So it is a complete all-arounder, exceptional boat. If you want to learn more about it, go to our website, www.pathfinderboats.com. You can also see us on our Facebook page, our Instagram page, and our YouTube channel. Really do yourself a favor and check this boat out.